dear all. Uh, it's a pleasure to uh, present in this conference. And uh, as a topic, I chose uh, uh, the contemporary trends uh, in uh, statehood. So the title is St Statehood 3.0, uh, Temptations and Restraints. Sounds uh, quite uh, exotic and needs some explanation. I will do this uh, in uh, uh, some moments. Actually, we have several components to outline here. The state is maybe one of the easiest for me because uh, I adopt a, a practical and operational definition of the state. So I am interested in the interaction of uh, a power center and the citizenry in a territory and uh, with regard also to the other states. Of course, you can have uh, many, many more perspectives on the state, uh, but uh, uh, that will be my uh, pragmatic uh, selection here. You also could approach the state uh, in very different levels of optimism. That can be seen from the illustrations of the slide. You can have more pessimistic and optimistic views, uh, more cynical and progressive. Uh, and of course, this is to an extent an answer to the question of the state being a monster. Uh, this very much will depend on the perspective. But I'm more interested uh, of the state as a way to dominate, to generate a certain level of uh, a social order and organization, and manage uh, human communities, not only top down, but in cooperation, and even to an extent bottom up. So, uh, now about this 3.0. The uh, idea came from uh, the development of the internet. Uh, there are three clear-cut uh, generations of internet uh, uh, as for now. We have one-sided flow of information in Web 1.0, original web. Then we have Web 2.0, that is mostly related to social media and bottom-up content production. And now, already for some time, we have Web 3.0. Uh, the previous trends continue, but we also have algorithm-based steering. Uh, what you see from the web is based on algorithms. Uh, there is huge amount of information, and only some of it reaches you. And it's not uh, entirely based on your choice, although it's based on calculating your preferences. So what could it mean to uh, statehood? Um, I framed it this way, that uh, we had statehood 1.0 as a pre-modern state. They were quite weak in terms of infrastructure and uh, reach uh, towards every citizen and every location. We had the statehood 2.0 as uh, the main reference uh, for nowadays. Uh, the modern states, based on the idea of cohesion, both political and identity aspects, and uh, a cohesive administration, clear borders, and so on. Tonis uh, uh, discussed uh, these uh, states uh, recently uh, in connection to uh, liberal democracy. What could then be uh, statehood 3.0? It is the information and technology rich uh, states. And here I'm mostly referring to the new developments of recent decades, not only 
but including uh, uh, the ones of uh, information and communication technology, automatization, development of all kinds of new uh, devices and so on. We will come to that. Now, the issue uh, uh, in contrast with um, a modern state and uh, uh, this uh, three zero state is uh, the uh, question of how control is reached. In modern state, you have clear cut uh, human beings, political leaders, citizens, political party leaders, policemen, uh, military teachers, whoever. In statehood 3.0, it is much more diverse and impersonal. Originally, there was much discussion, especially in globalization optimistic literature, of the state somehow fading away and dissolving into a social fabric. But what I uh, argue here is that these new technologies enable a new level of cohesion, and this is uh, a much more impersonal cohesion. Uh, of course, this is a possibility, uh, but uh, we have to discuss its uh, uh, limits. So, uh, we have the idea of uh, the state, uh, statehood 3.0. What about uh, temptations and uh, restraints? Uh, I'm based here on the idea that if you have new capacities uh, uh, at your disposal, you are interested in making use of these and also test uh, the limits of, of such capacities. This is what I here refer to as temptations. Temptations of this uh, uh, technology-rich uh, governance. Now, with regard to restraints, I see them in two ways, emerging in two ways. One way is related to automatic or self-restraints that come from the system itself. If you press very hard into one direction, you will not get forward in most situations. This is an automatic restraint. This is uh, characterized by the man uh, running in the uh, squirrel's wheel. Uh, the other restraints that do not emerge automatically need much work, much elaboration, much willpower, and this is uh, the harder part. Here I will mostly discuss uh, the automatic restraints of uh, uh, these uh, new uh, technology-rich uh, states. But uh, of course I will give some uh, thoughts about uh, also these uh, restraints uh, that need to be developed. So, uh, my understanding of automatic restraints and uh, the mechanisms for automatic restraints is much based on uh, Christopher Hood, who has uh, brought out that uh, all the ways of uh, governing, emphasizing different aspects of human nature and uh, different ways to steer uh, human beings, uh, can be over-exploited. All of them are only partly perfect and partly internally flawed. And that's why if you adopt just one strategy of politics and governance, then eventually you will uh, run into difficulties, as demonstrated various times uh, in history. So uh, hopefully we will see also some automatic restraints in these uh, technology-rich uh, states. But let's uh, have a closer look. What do I mean by technology-rich uh, states? Mostly the development uh, of uh, uh, 
uh, information and communication based uh, technologies, automatization, and development of artificial intelligence. This is, uh, uh, of course, something that is ongoing, but uh, uh, anyway, we can sketch out some main features. Uh, what I think needs to be differentiated is um, uh, the different aspects of this uh, technological change. On the one hand, uh, with what we are more familiar is probably all kinds of communication systems, uh, internet, uh, uh, Zoom, whatever. Uh, but ICT also has uh, different uh, uses. Uh, it can lead to various uh, monitoring solutions. Um, one camera is here as an example. It uh, can also lead to huge databases containing information about human beings that can be accessed only by few people probably officials, uh, and uh, utilized uh, for a certain purpose. So here, analytics and access are of uh, key importance. And in recent decade or so, uh, we have also seen the development of autonomous uh, devices. Uh, this can be better seen from uh, uh, the illustrations here. We have already drones that uh, fly and can deliver post or kill someone. Uh, uh, we have uh, autonomous weapons and weapon systems and so on. So uh, this technological revolution has many aspects. But eventually, at least nowadays, it must come down to human beings in a form or uh, another. We can't go very deep into this here, uh, but what we could say is that uh, uh, the states uh, uh, seem to win uh, from uh, um, having more uh, devices, databases, resources, and uh, so on. Both uh, the small states, who could function as normal states, and uh, the uh, very large states, who could operate across borders much more easily. But maybe also human beings can win out, I mean, ordinary citizens, by having, let's say, more energy-rich homes, uh, 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 equipment at their disposal. So it's uh, not only a one-way development. But of course, human beings are slightly, um, you know, uh, emotional sometimes. And one illustration about uh, this Facebook and Match uh, is uh, witness to various ways uh, you can manipulate uh, people as well. Okay, so uh, this is just a very brief sketch of this uh, technology richness. Let's now move to the uh, human dimension and uh, with, an, with a political angle. Uh, we have uh, technological optimism nowadays. Much can be done with the new capacities. And uh, here I will focus on just two selected aspects of this temptation, how it is mediated uh, into human activities, political and governing uh, techniques. And uh, one of these concerns sovereignty, uh, uh, new uh, ways of uh, uh, inequality uh, in international arena. And the other one is more domestic. Uh, it's uh, the relationship of neoliberal uh, governance uh, to uh, democracy and citizenship. In a way, we have now the tentative question about uh, the monster being cold. 
you know, uh, uh, technology-based monster could really be a cold monster. All living forms uh, have to be at least warm. Uh, let's have a look. First on sovereignty issues. Sovereignty, as we know, has been much uh, debated in the last uh, at least quarter of a century. And uh, we are speaking of a new game of sovereignty based on much more interaction uh, in between the states and a kind of regulated intervention. The core, legal core of sovereignty is intact but the operational mechanisms have uh, started to change, both in international arena and also in domestic arena. Bartelson, for example, uh, discusses uh, this as uh, uh, the uh, governmentalization of sovereignty. It uh, will become more homogeneously constructed, assessed, and also performed across uh, the globe. But uh, uh, newer research, for example, uh, uh, by Hameiri, indicates that such uh, governmentalized sovereignty actually runs into troubles uh, precisely because of human agency. Uh, for example, studying state building interventions in the world. He demonstrates that even if you go in with a clear-cut plan, you will become embedded in local contexts. And these will shape also the ones who intervene, not only the ones who are inside. Now, this is, uh, I would say, common knowledge. Uh, what about this technology? I would say that in contemporary dynamics, um, uh, partly based on uh, what we just discussed, uh, we see a return of realism in world politics. It is based partly on the failure of these interventions or other results as expected, partly on the other uh, uh, power centers uh, re-emerging uh, besides uh, the United States. Now, these, uh, let's say, several uh, active uh, states, uh, strong states operating across uh, the borders, uh, of course, utilize uh, the new resources uh, available. They, uh, um, just to bring some examples, utilize cyber attacks against strategic targets. Maybe you remember Iranian nuclear power problems. Uh, they can kill people uh, and so on. So, uh, to an extent, it will just uh, be continuation of old uh, international politics with the new means. But uh, on the other hand, of course, uh, leaks, uh, uh, failure to deliver what is expected has led to uh, legitimacy crisis in Western countries. And uh, this uh, uh, will, to an extent, uh, affect uh, the contemporary dynamics. Uh, now, one very important aspect of the contemporary dynamics is uh, securitization. Uh, this is the idea of, I would say, hyper-politicizing some aspects of life. Uh, when you politicize, you have several viewpoints and you have arguments uh, in between different viewpoints. When you hyper-politicize, uh, you try to depict something as so huge a threat that there is just one answer, no other answers, and you are able to deliver. So, uh, over-securitization is something that can be uh, built up as a feeling, uh, and this is much based on media, social media, mass media, whatever. And uh, this builds a justification for more top-down uh, strategies. 
of course, based on good intentions. We had EU new uh, databases on people uh, justified by Schengen free movement. We will have several other measures uh, and a new layer of documentation of people based on COVID uh, uh, prevention. Uh, but all in all, these nice and uh, securitizing initiatives build up a new layer of top-down uh, governance, also in the Western states, and uh, it is uh, much uh, uh, anonymous. Uh, most people uh, just have glimpses of it, uh, and it is uh, quite uh, extensive, and uh, as it is relatively precise, it could be backed up by uh, quite small forces. Uh, when you know where to go, you don't need a police being everywhere. Just to uh, bring one example. So we see state capacities extending to new domains, and this concerns both uh, international and domestic arena. Now, as a step further, I would then uh, uh, reach towards uh, uh, ordinary citizens. And um, this is uh, the question of uh, the technological developments uh, relating to um, uh, Western democracy and citizenship. Based on what we discussed just now, we can say that there are uh, issues or temptations of semi-authoritarianism. Uh, it is not something that is uh, a clear-cut uh, dictatorship. It is more managing people in rational ways and uh, uh, getting them along into co-governance initiatives. So we have people participating in governing activities, but not as uh, uh, democratic uh, decision makers. This is, of course, just one aspect, uh, uh, but we need to study it uh, slightly further because uh, especially the mixture of uh, such governance uh, and ICT could create uh, very dangerous combinations uh, uh, in terms of uh, democracy. Now, um, neoliberal governing techniques are actually manifold and uh, to a large extent uh, based on the idea of liberating people. Uh, you make them uh, uh, freer, more capable to act in certain ways. But, of course, this is premised on the idea that there is uh, a good way. So what is different from original neoliberalism in contemporary neoliberal governance is uh, the indication of the good way and steering people to uh, uh, act along uh, these lines. Of course, we have also several other uh, techniques. Uh, I can't go uh, into this in depth. They include monitoring, securitization, communication, and, and so on. But the main focus is similar. Uh, nudging people towards uh, some uh, ways of behavior. Now, um, um, to an extent, it can be uh, balanced automatically by uh, uh, the inherent weaknesses in neoliberal governance. Uh, uh, I have turned them paradoxes. Uh, uh, the two main ones are that when you seek to uh, steer people towards a very certain way of life by providing uh, uh, motivators and maybe also some punishments, you uh, turn them into quite 
that uh, uh, in imaginative uh, uh, people. There is lack of creativity, lack of uh, manifold uh, uh, perspectives. You will have these uh, very technocratic uh, performers. Um, the other way uh, of um, um, uh, the balance emerging is uh, that uh, actually the requirements grow and become uh, too heavy for people. So instead of liberating them, they could act as uh, some kinds of uh, excessive uh, steering mechanisms resulting in neurosis and its uh, therapeutic governance. Also, very much against uh, the ideas of uh, empowering people to achieve more. So, we also have uh, some uh, balances here. But uh, all in all, we could say the liberal democratic balances uh, actually currently are eroded. The very traditional ideas onto which representative government and uh, citizen agency were founded, we have different uh, emancipatory activities, surveillance, documentation, post-democratic trends and so on that erode uh, the separation of public and private sphere, immunity, citizen basic status, functioning representative government, and so on. So we need slightly more as uh, compared to uh, automatic balances. And uh, as said, I will just give an indication of that. I would say that part of the answer is re-strengthening uh, the existing institutions. Part of the answer could be in democratic citizenship education, broader development of civility, and so on. But uh, in this technology-rich time, we need uh, more. And uh, so, to conclude, um, we couldn't also say that the state currently is a cold monster. As uh, demonstrated, it is still mostly human-based. So even if we have much technology, it is still at least warm, if not a hot monster. Um, now, we saw some automatic balances uh, in the system, but we need to develop additional restraints. And to develop restraints to technologic temptations, I would advise to build on the experiences of uh, the previous periods. Uh, we already see how modern international system somehow re-emerges in a new shape. Most likely, we will see some resurgence also of uh, representative government, at least in Western states. But what we need to do is transform the old balances into the new technology-rich context. Maybe we need new kind of barriers, for example, uh, immunity or privacy could be uh, uh, quite different uh, in contemporary age of exposure. This is something that could be uh, discussed and studied further. But I hope, uh, as a result of uh, what we just went through, we have a clearer picture of the temptations and restraints, our opportunities with uh, statehood uh, 3.0. So, thank you.